That's far. <laughs> While coming for this TEDx event at Paris, something interesting happened. I lost my baggage at the airport during transfers. <laughs> In last couple of days, I have realized less choices can sometimes make us make us more happy. I arrived with just a passport, a little bit of cash, my laptop bag, and these clothes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Saurabh Gupta from Mumbai, and I'm an accidental environmentalist. My environmental journey started with a prank something like four and a half years back. In a corporate job, I was leading a very sedentary lifestyle. <laughs> Working hard, drinking, eating, living for the weekend. And one day in my office, I received an email. It was an email where somebody was congratulating me for participating in a cycling marathon. At first, I thought it was a spam. I was just about to delete the email I saw there was another email. Then there were more emails. These emails were coming from my co-workers and somebody from the office had actually nominated me for a cycling event. It was a prank. <laughs> now the matter was official, so I decided to take up the challenge. As you can imagine, I lost the race. <laughs> but this cycling marathon kick-started a new phase in my life. I was hooked onto cycling. I started going everywhere on bicycle and very soon I started losing weight. From there, what you see till now, it has been a long journey. Uh, I was getting more healthy physically and mentally both and that's why I decided to quit the corporate world. With a leap of faith, I packed my bicycle on a plane and I left for Africa. In the next two years, I was cycling in Asia, Africa and Europe. One day, while Playing with my cyclo computer, I realized I had finished 50,000 kilometers. I was stunned to know that this distance was more than the circumference of the earth. Now there was another question popping in my head. Am I just accumulating kilometers? Am I doing something meaningful? Is there something more or bigger or something more interesting I can do? Uh, so with this thought, I started realizing and remembering my childhood. I have grown up in Himalayas and in Himalayas we used to live in harmony with the nature. We used to grow our own food in a soil which was nourished with the compost which was made at home. And we used to share food and the air which was coming from the clean air from the mountains and the water from the nearby stream and the food that we used to grow locally was the natural medicine for us. We never needed medicine. And coming back to the cities I saw a complete different reality. The air we breathe and the water we drink and the food that we're eating in several countries has become the source of most modern medical problems. And there's so much around us than just the buildings, concrete buildings that we see all the time. The locality that we're living is a piece of planet. It has its own ecosystem and it has its own communities. With this thought and something like 20,000 rupees, I launched Earth 5R. There was one more reason behind that because I had cycled 50,000 kilometers which was more than the circumference of the earth. I wanted to work for earth. So that, so the 5 R's of earth 5 R meant respect, reduce, reuse, hmm. recycle and restore. <laughs> respect for the planet and its inhabitant, reduce our needs, uh, reuse and buy less, recycling what we cannot reuse and restore by volunteering in local community programs like cleanups and plantation. That is the whole idea. I started with cleanup activities. In the beginning, I started alone. I was the only one. After a few days, my son joined me. <laughs> in next couple of weeks, a couple of friends also joined. It was already becoming a small movement. And now that the work started spreading around, in a few weeks, we had hundreds of people joining the movement. It had already become a small movement. With more volunteers, around 30, uh, 350 volunteers joined us, and all over India, 40 cities across India, we were doing 40 community activities per month, cleaning rivers and lakes and beaches, we were collecting the waste, 
and we're sending it to the municipality trucks. One of those mornings, while finishing one of the beach cleanups in Mumbai, as I was ready to dump the waste in the nearby bin, I came across a man in rags. Let's call him Raghu. Raghu surprised me with a question he asked in a very sarcastic manner. He said in Hindi, Udhar se kachra utha gai, idhar dalne ka kya fayda? Which in English means, what's the point in shifting the garbage from the beach to the bin? It was a very profound question asked by a man who looked to be illiterate and was probably homeless. And providing, provided our education, why couldn't we think about this before? And we were thinking that we are cleaning up and we are restoring the planet. Whereas all we were doing is we were shifting the garbage from one location to another location, creating more landfills. I felt defeated. But Raghu's words stayed with me in my heart. After a few days, as I was cycling in the neighborhood near a slum, I met a woman called Swati Kamble. Swati was one of those women with little to no education living in that slum area with no future because they were just doing few odd jobs, no livelihood skills, and her hut was surrounded with, by a lot of garbage and clothes waste. After finding, we figured out that there was a tailor nearby who would cut clothes and make clothes and he would throw because most of the slums all over the world don't have a formal waste management system. So the waste was lying open. We went to the tailor and asked if he would give these waste clothes to us. With the help of a fashion designing volunteer, we designed a handicraft product doll. Now these dolls needed to be stuffed with something. So we went to the nearby coffee chain and we asked them to give us a coffee waste. They gave us the coffee waste which we dried and stuffed inside the doll. And we created a doll which was called as coffee doll. These dolls not only looked cute, but they also smelled of coffee. <laughs> these are made out of waste clothes. And these dolls not only solve the environmental problem of the waste, but they also started providing livelihood to women like Swati so she could earn money. And we started, we went to a nearby store and we spoke to the retail store if they were, they were willing to buy these products. They were excited because there was something novel, something smells, you know, something which was interesting. They started receiving orders for these dolls. What happened after that, that Swati was flooded with orders. She had more than hundreds of dolls and her house was very small. She couldn't accommodate too many people. So we had to figure out a community center. Now, as you're aware, most of the slums around the world they're so packed, they're so populated, there's no space for having a community center. Same is the story with Mumbai and India as well. But we had to figure it out. So how would we, how would we scale up this entire idea? We had hit a roadblock here. Anybody who's ever been to India knows that India has lots of temples everywhere. On every nook and corner you'll find temples. In fact, we have more temples than schools. So there was this idea, why can't we go to the temples and create a center of learning. So with this idea, what we started doing is we started utilizing the temples. All these women and even their children started getting inside the temple because they find it very interesting. And these temples eventually became the center of learning, center of humanity, center of progress for humans. It became, they became community center. And now there was no limit. We could, we could find new temples and we could conduct a lot of training. After a few months, Swati earned enough money to buy her own sewing machine and she employed a couple of women and now she's making a lot of dolls. In fact, now the entire stretch of the slum is busy making dolls. Hundreds of families have got livelihood because of this idea. And now Swati is respected in her community as an artist, as, as, as a social entrepreneur. And she's very satisfied now. She has respect. Stories of people like Swati and Raghu have got an important message for the rest of the world. True change should be sustainable and it should touch the lives of those who are most vulnerable in the society. But how do we put these all stories together? How do we make a change that is truly scalable, truly sustainable? And the solution lies into having, connecting the dots and having a model. With the help of our citizen volunteers, we came up with an idea a project plan which is called as ACT. Action, Collaboration and Transformation. 
taking action by collaborating with the local stakeholders which is the citizens youth students municipality government companies communities like slums and all the people member of the society and coming together and doing spending some time doing the community work that was the whole idea so with the help of our volunteers we started going to the buildings we convinced building to give their waste so that we could segregate it so we built a system what we did was like we introduced rack pickers into the system now these rack pickers who were earlier picking up the garbage from the street were now more respectfully going to the buildings where they had access to the plastic waste they started getting the plastic waste and we went to the local community based recycling centers where these plastic waste would be shredded we would shred it like this this is the plastic waste which has been shredded and then we would make these plastic pallets these plastic pallets with this plastic pallets we started making benches toys and lot of things it goes back to the system and it's that easy it's not that difficult it's very simple what we also did was like we started taking the compost we started taking the uh, organic food waste and we developed a decentralized composting units we spoke to the citizen that the waste is our own responsibility we need to process at a, a local level and we started processing it so that's how the compost was used in the locality for plantation program the plastic was for recycling and whatever was possible to upcycle like paper clothes we are already giving to women like sorti to earn livelihood that's how within 6 months of the launch of this project we converted 250 mumbai buildings into complete absolute zero waste these buildings are not sending their waste outside the locality it's all being processed within within this entire area and around 1.2 million people have been impacted by earth fibers program to give you a context of the problem Hawaii was earlier sending 500 tons of waste to the landfill, which is equivalent to the size of 100 elephants, and that's every single day. The Hawaii locality has shortage of 36,000 trees, which is equivalent to 468,000 oxygen cylinders every single year. It also has 140,000 people living without livelihood, which is a shortage of 4.8 million euros loss of GDP in that area. Now 1.2 million people have been impacted directly and indirectly the program is running in 40 cities across India all run by volunteers that's the power of citizens that's the power of collective efforts uh, i would like to show you a small video about our fiber project so that you can get an idea how the problem can be converted into a solution
for the work done by Earth Fiber Act project, I was awarded as Young Leader India France by President Macron during his visit to India. And this is where we discuss about a project for Paris. The project was later on selected for Paris Peace Forum, the first ever Paris Peace Forum in November 2018. Paris Peace Forum provided us a great platform. The project was showcased to 60 heads of nations and it was one of those 121 projects selected from all over the world. We got an opportunity and uh, invitation from several countries to start this project. When I came to Paris for this event, I realized that Paris also needs some action. In 2016, around 3.5 million tons of waste was recovered from Paris. 61% of all of this waste was incinerated. 5% was sent to landfill and only 29% was recycled. The recycling rate in Paris is very, very low. I also, I also realized there was a lot of cigarette litters and garbage in Paris. While pollutions throw out around 200, 250 tons of food, I was shocked to see a homeless guy eating food from the garbage bin. So how do we solve it? How do we move ahead? We have to solve this through an idea. And let's do an exercise which will take one minute of your time and let's try to come with an idea. Are you ready? Yes. Close your eyes. Imagine yourself sitting in your home. Draw a three kilometer radius around your house. Now think about three problems that bother you the most in this area. Open your eyes. Now if I had to guess, and I've spoken to a lot of people in Paris, three common problems that are coming around is a lot of traffic, cigarette litter and a lot of garbage here and there, and homeless people. Imagine yourself sitting at your home on a weekend. What do you see yourself doing? If you could take out one hour of your time to solve any of these problems that bother you for the rest of the week, one hour for something that matters. I'd like to take this opportunity to launch Act Paris right from this stage and invite all of you to be part of this big change. From individualism to collectivism, the journey begins with you. Merci.